Good morning and good afternoon. Ayurveda for skin, hair, and how to live a wholesome, long, healthy life. We are exploring this fascinating topic with Karen Chabot, who has studied with Basant Lad at the Ayurvedic Institute in New Mexico. Karen has a master's degree in Ayurvedic medicine and has her own school. She began offering professional massage therapy and Ayurveda counseling in 1997 as a result of experiencing her own healing from autoimmune disease. She founded the Newport Massage School and she has all the certification that you can think of, which are listed over here. I am Amita from Nourish Dog, a platform for natural and holistic therapies. I'm super excited to introduce all of you to one of the pioneers of Ayurveda in the US, Karen Shabo. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So let's just start with the basics of uh, Ayurveda, the science of Ayurveda, and how to live a wholesome, long life. Well, that's a vast topic because science of life basically covers every field of living. And Ayurveda basically is a Sanskrit word meaning span of time, span of lifetime. So are you meaning span and the actual time frame, which is now in, in this this time space that we live and the Veda is wisdom and it's life's wisdom. So it's, it's inherent in all of us in our DNA. We all have this knowledge of how to be aligned with nature and the divine laws that exist in the universe. So really Ayurveda is about remembering the wisdom that we were innately born with and studying Ayurveda helps to wake up the knowledge and helps us to remember that we need to be connected to nature, that without being connected to nature, we, we can lose ourselves and become disconnected as um, collective and personally. So finding your balance, recalibrating your life, nature is a big part of that. Being in nature, immersing yourself in the forest, along the beaches, along the shores, uh, seashores, lake shores, wherever you are, whatever really lights you up, mountains, rivers, you know, we're all so different as to where we resonate the best in nature, but this is really the best place to begin. And as above, so below. So we are, we are the cosmos and the cosmos is us and we are nature and nature really is, it's like my church. It's my, it's where I go to find sacredness and to commune and to feel reconnected. So that's a very, very big part of Ayurveda, working with the natural rhythms in nature, the bio rhythms, waking up in the morning, making sure we purify the body, we cleanse, we have a bowel movement, we eat fruits because they're natural tissue cleansers and we're in cleansing modality. That, that phase of the day is about cleansing and that's just the way it is. That's just the natural order of, of the day. And then the mid part of the day is when we digest the best. That's when we have our biggest meal. That's when the sun is highest in the sky. That's when our digestive fire within our intestines, which we call um, Agni, it's a Sanskrit word, um, Jatha Agni, we need to digest our food. The biggest meal should be eaten during this time, not late at night. So at night, the sun starts to go down and so does our digestive fire. And Ayurveda says it's not what you eat, it's what you digest. So if, if you can digest something, then it's something that you should eat. And um, if you can't digest it, then that's what you should not eat. So that's basically very, um, doesn't get any more intuitive. Uh, it does give us lists of food for the three doshas so that you have a starting place and some sort of structure according to your unique constitution. But when it comes down to it, we need to make sure that we're eating what we can digest. And what you can't digest will turn into ama, which are toxins in the body. And ama, A-M-A, -A, is a Sanskrit word meaning toxins, and those toxins can turn to fat. They can turn to all kinds of things, free radicals, and, and then we're struggling and we're, we're, we're trying to um, you know, regain balance and our immune system is, is challenged by these toxins. So our digestion is everything and it's the key to beauty, 
the key to health, the key to peace of mind. You are what you eat, basically. So if you want to have beautiful, a beautiful exterior, we need to be beautiful on the interior, meaning there can't be putrefaction, there can't be fermentation, there can't be clogged up channels inside the body with ama and toxins from food that maybe your neighbor could digest because he has a really strong agony but maybe you weren't born with that sort of strong agony and you were born with maybe an autoimmune disease where you have a gluten sensitivity for example then the gluten that your neighbor eats is just fine for him, but it's not fine for you. And this can turn into inflammation in the body as well. So the inflammation will manifest most likely in itises like diverticulitis and psoriasis or um, arthritis and rosacea, skin disorders are a big, big problem with people who have eating disorders. So to have beautiful skin, we need to make sure that we're digesting and eating the right foods for our constitution. And we're all so unique. We were all born with a certain preponderance of the five great elements, ether, air, earth, fire, water. And these five great elements live outside in the cosmos. They live within us. And we have all a unique constitution, meaning we, some people are born with a lot of fire, some people are born with a lot of earth, some people are born with a lot of water, and, and, and so on. And you need to know what it is that you have as far as your constitution, which is when the sperm met the egg, and you were determined as a being, you were, your constitution was, was set. And, and from there, it can go off balance with wrong lifestyle, wrong habits, wrong relationships, anger issues, um, living in the wrong part of the country, living in a cold climate when you already have too much cold in your body by nature or living in a hot climate that when you already were born with too much fire or um, eating all the wrong type of foods for your body. All these things can disturb the original constitution of the body. So our life is about coming back to our original balance, our constitution. So that's what Ayurveda teaches is how to come back to your unique balance. And we're going to spoke, speak about the face and the, um, the skin. I'm not so much of a hair expert. And we spoke a little earlier. I think you got the email that I don't know how hair ended up on our title, but I can talk a little bit about hair, but not, it's not my forte. Somehow, it, I don't know, it, it miraculously or magically appeared on our title, but we can skim over that and focus more on the face. Now there's ways to determine what's going on in the body just by doing simple analysis of many things, including the pulse, including the tongue. The tongue says a lot about the physical body, what's going on inside. And even our urine, the, the, the smell of the urine, the color of the urine, if it's a cloudy or is it clear, um, our, our bowel movements tell us so much. Are they floating? Are they sinking? Are they, are they dark colored? Are they light colored? Are they little pellets? Are they, are they uh, a decent size? Are they loose? All these things tell us what's going on inside the body without having to get blood work or injected or, you know, having all these invasive sort of, you know, checks by the doctor. We can learn these little tricks and avoid going to the doctor. Of course, you might have to go sometimes. It's not completely avoiding the doctor. But what I'm trying to teach people are, are basic tools and um, skill sets to help you get through life so that you don't feel completely codependent on the medical system in the allopathic world here in hospitals and doctors. It's okay to go to them. We need them every now and then. But what I like to teach is an integrative way of living so that you can, you can have your health in your hands. You can be in charge of your body. By looking at this little face here, we can look at little things like number 17. There's a little freckle on the lip. And a freckle on the lip, unless you were born with a freckle on the lip, can indicate parasites in the body. So don't freak out if you have a freckle. If you've always had it, that might just be a birthmark. But if it just suddenly appeared, it's something to check. And there's other ways to check on that as sort of a double, you know, affirmation that you have parasites is by looking at your tongue. And if you have um, what we call mapping on the tongue, there are all kinds of 
kind of um, sections and pink pink lines that section out that it looks like the map of the United States or something on your tongue it, it, and you see the sections and different variations of pink and red then that's another sign of parasites. Also biting the nails can be another sign of parasites. So there's three things that would point toward parasites and don't feel bad about having parasites because so many of us have parasites. Almost everybody to some degree has an overgrowth of parasites. We are actually one big parasite and we have these little microbes that are friendly microbes and non-friendly microbes. And the goal is to keep our friendly microbes in balance with the unfriendly microbes and stay healthy so we don't get yeast infections, we don't get candida like that, you know, and giardia from the water and um, there's so many different types of parasites we could get that actually deplete our minerals and deplete our vitamins and our, our protein levels and can make us feel exhausted. So you could go years and not know that you have a parasite in the body that is is taking away your your zinc which is one of the constituents that make the skin beautiful so go on a parasite cleanse i recommend dr clark uh, dr clark.com i believe her name is and she sells a parasite cleanse that's really effective i I've, I've done it and i recommend everybody do it anyways at the turn of either the spring when winter goes into spring and then another time to do it is when we have uh, summer going into fall these turns of the season are optimum times to do a cleanse even a parasite cleanse and then if you look a little further you can see um, as we look at this face there are um, well let's look at the eyebrows so when we have eyebrow, um, loss of hair right here we're eating too much sugar and when we have loss of hair at the end of our eyebrows, then we may have a thyroid deficiency. It would be time to check your thyroid. And I highly recommend learning the numbers so that you can know what is a normal thyroid, what is subclinical and what is, is over hyperthyroid. And when you go, so the, the doctors tend to, to kind of mm, tell you to go home if you're subclinical because it's a risk on their end if they give uh, thyroid medication unprecedented or overdo it because then you can the, the side effects are tachycardia and heart attack and then they can get sued so I always say protect yourself and and be the squeaky wheel and tell your doctor I don't really want to be subclinical and I'm willing to take the risk give me a low dose of thyroid medicine because that will take the puffiness out of your skin because low thyroid will give swelling under the eyes and you know, you'll, you'll get the jowls and you'll get 10 pounds overweight, you'll become lethargic, your skin will dry out. So it's very important if you start losing the hairs here to check your thyroid. And I recommend a blood test. It's, it's sometimes okay to check your temperature for three nights, three mornings in a row. As soon as you wake up before you move, check your temperature. If it's sub below 98.6, then likely that you have a lot low thyroid but i would recommend getting the blood test because thyroid is nothing to mess around with and then if you look at let's see this is a liver line right here and this is the spleen line so you know how we get those little furrowed lines and the one in the middle is just worry and stress and um this liver line just means that there's a depletion in the liver and, and that's all it means. So don't be stressed out or worried about your liver. You don't want to send the emotion of fear to your liver, but instead you might want to do a liver cleanse. And you could do something as simple as drinking dandelion tea every morning or three times a day. It's delicious. And it goes right for the liver. And any bitter taste has an affinity for the liver. And if you have a line on this side, it's a deep line, that means there is a weakness or a depletion in your spleen. And one of the foods the spleen really hates is ice cream. Unfortunately, I hate to tell some of you out there who love ice cream, but cold, sweet, especially late at night, can deplete the spleen, which is the organ responsible for flushing the body with new fresh blood, oxygenated blood. And it also is responsible for releasing the white blood cells, the um, lymphocytes that, that build our immunity. So we need our spleen, we need our liver. So notice if you have those lines on either side and if you have the one in the middle, that just is an indication that maybe, you know, reduce your stress somehow, maybe factor in one hour a day of something 
that you love, some self-care, something that would be maybe a massage or a meditation or yoga if you love to do yoga or a dance if you love to dance, whatever it is, you may need more time for yourself if you have that deep line in the middle. Because self-care really is, is key to health and happiness. Basically, Ayurveda is the science of life, but it's the science of longevity through self-healing, which is why it's so important to know yourself, to know your constitution, what makes you tick, what puts you out of balance, how do you go out of balance? Everybody goes out of balance in a different way. Learning your body, learning yourself will be the best thing you ever did for yourself so that you can always notice the red flags as soon as you start to go down the wrong track and your body is off center, you'll start noticing and then you'll know, oh, well, probably I shouldn't have eaten that fried calamari yesterday or whatever it is that you went out of balance with. You know, for me, it's a red nose. I, I eat something that's too spicy. If I go to the Japanese restaurant and have a little wasabi with my sushi, uh, I'll get uh, my nose turns red. So uh, I know that that's the point where I'm starting to become inflamed and I better choose cooling foods the following day to mitigate the heat, the internal heat. And cooling foods would be things like cucumbers and uh, lettuce, sweet fruits like sweet blueberries, sweet melon. Um, sweet potato are uh, right now would be the ideal food because we're going into the fall season where we all need to be grounded and cooled because we're at this point in September accumulated summer heat in the tissues. And to remove the summer heat, we, uh, we really need to eat foods that are extra cooling now, but yet grounding. Because as we go into the fall, ether and air or the wind elements start to exacerb exacerbate inside our bodies and outside our bodies. So root vegetables, but sweet cooling root vegetables are really ideal at this time and into October, like pumpkin squash, butternut squash, acorn squash, the sweet potato, the carrot, the turnip. They are very sweet and they will cool the inflammation from the summer heat. What else can I tell you about this? Well, so, if, um, we have a, something on, on a little bit you can touch upon on the scalp and the hair care, if, if you wanted to touch upon that or... Uh, yeah. Oh, this this was in my slide, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. That's why we put it over there. <laughs> okay. Yes, I didn't remember that I put this in. So it was just one slide out of like sixty, right? Yes. So, Correct. So this one little slide will just touch a pound quickly. And this beer, Breer and Garage oil is what I have here, and I recommend Mazda what Enterprises. It well, what is it? Garage. Okay. Garage. It's a very unusual name because it's Sanskrit. And I'll spell it out. It's a little bit um, from being here in my refrigerator. The, the letters have been, um, you know, fuzzed up. So it's a B H R I N G R A J. Again, that's B H R I N G R A J. Okay. And this is a very special oil for regrowing hair. And so many of us, Men and women have stress and that causes hair loss as well as thyroid condition. Can You can lose hair with that as well as stressed out kidneys and adrenals. Our hair can, we can lose our hair. And in between seasons, sometimes we lose our hair, we shed. So this oil, apply it topically, rub it in and let it sit on your scalp before you go to bed, if you can sleep with it overnight, that would be ideal and put a, like a blanket or pillow or some sort of, um, not pillow, towel over your pillow or a pillowcase over your pillow um, that you don't mind soiling with the oil and sleep with it. Or if you can only do an hour and leave it in and then you put the shampoo to get it out on top of the oil instead of putting water on it, first you apply the shampoo. Otherwise you'll be there forever trying to get the oil out. Shampoo comes right after the oil push the, the shampoo into your scalp with your fingers and then rinse it off with warm water. If you do this every day for a week, you'll notice you'll get more hair growth as well as castor oil. Castor oil, it's, it's another famous Ayurvedic remedy for increasing eyelashes, eyelash growth, eyebrow growth, and the, the hair on your scalp. So basically that's all I can say about 
growing your hair, but if you wanted to cool your inflammation down, the head is where the heat rises right in the body. So the head accumulates inflammation. That's why we get a lot of hot heads or the term hot heads or redneck or people get angry and their face turns red. All the anger rises to the head. So a great way to release heat in the body is by um, putting cooling oil on the head. There's another oil called Brahmi oil. And Brahmi is extremely cooling. And you can also buy that at Mazda Enterprises. Also Banyan Botanicals has a nice Brahmi oil. And B-R-A-M-H-I, I believe, M-I. I have to spell it out with my... Let me see if I can get that spelled out properly. I think it's B-R-A-H-M-I, Brahmi. Right. Yeah, that's B R A H M I. Yeah, sometimes if I spell it out by myself with a pen, then I, I get the spelling correct. I'm, I'm a yeah. visual person. Yeah. <laughs> so Brahmi is really cooling and it also increases mental clarity and memory, intelligence, cognition. It is it's really um, a great way to have happy dreams at night as well. So it's nice to combine them both a little Brahmi, a little Greer and Garage. Or if you are privy to a salon that is trained in Shiradhara therapy, then you could get a Shiradhara treatment that has an oil specifically geared for you. So you could ask, I want Brahmi and I want rear and garage because I want to cool, have mental clarity, and I also want to grow my hair. And that therapist should, should have these oils handy if they're really trained well to do proper Shiradhara therapy. And there are um, Panchakarma clinics all throughout the United States, many, many in India, but um, many in New York, but I'll spell Panchakarma. So you can Google it if you want to find something close to you. Panchakarma is P-A-N-C-H-A, and then Karma, we all know, K-A-R-M-A, Panchakarma. And these clinics are for rejuvenation and purification of body, mind, spirit. So they'll give you a monofast of food. They'll take you through a whole cleanse of herbs and massage and different body work modalities to help bring your body back into balance. And you can do it even for one day, three days or a week. And I know the royalty in India, they used to do it for like a month um, every spring and it would give them another 20, 30 years to their life because it was so <laughs> rejuvenating. That's, so, but no of us can really afford that, right? <laughs> um, some of us can, but not all of us. So this yeah. is an example of Sharadara right here. And basically, this is a very ancient quote about reversing gray hair. And by putting oil on the head, it's, it's another whole, a, a whole nother remedy for removing gray, as well as removing dairy, believe it or not. Dairy does something to the body where it depletes something that reduces peroxide in the body. Hydrogen peroxide, or sorry, that increases peroxide. So the peroxide actually causes the hair to become white. So dairy does something, and I can't tell you the exact science behind it, but in the end, what, what happens is peroxide is elevated. So uh, maybe you know switch over to macadamia milk or, or rice milk or almond milk instead of dairy, if you have excessive amount of gray hair. And do this oil application to yourself if you can, or if you wanted to get the whole therapy done, this Shiradhara therapy is one of the most profound therapies I've ever given and that I've ever received. I love giving these therapies. I love teaching this class actually. And this class I combine with warm stones. So we lay the warm stones around the body, under the body, supports the head, and they're smooth, warm ocean stones. And the oil flows over the forehead for about 45 to 50 minutes. And the closer it is to the head, the thicker the stream, the more rejuvenating it will be to the body. It helps with insomnia. It basically helps with everything because you know what? The brain is the master of the entire body. So if our brain, if our mind is intact and we're balanced here, then it can send, you know, it's the conductor of the whole symphony. So if the conductor's drunk, <laughs> the symphony is not going to work. But if the conductor is is alert and and alive and and ignited, then the whole symphony can can play beautifully. So by 
by putting the oil on, on the head like this in this flow, it opens the third eye, opens the crown chakra, and it, it helps breathing, it helps regulate breathing patterns so that people become more relaxed. And it, it does so many other things besides just healing insomnia, reducing pain or anxiety or depression. It can heal so many other psychological disorders as well. So I recommend finding a, a spa that, that could help you with all of it, with beautiful hair, beautiful skin, and um, balance in the body through shira dara, shira meaning head, dara meaning flow. It's a Sanskrit word. And you wanna find a very good trained shira dara therapist because if you get a bad shira dara, it it's, could actually not, it could be a reverse of health. If they, if they move it too fast on your head, you can get a headache. If, they, if it's cold and you really don't need cold, then it can give you a headache, things like that. You need someone who knows what they're doing. Okay, so let's go to the next yeah, season. So the seasons and skin, how does that, how does it come into play? Well, the summer season is when we accumulate the heat that can either bring inflammation or, um, you know, through the skin where we get rosacea and acne. A lot of people who are prone to acne will get their worst breakouts in September. And it's simply because of the summer accumulation. So it's a good time to cleanse the inflammations in the body right now in September by drinking green drinks, cooling foods like I, I listed earlier before, the sweet fruits, eliminating acid fruits like um, tomatoes are basically a fruit and other acidic fruits and citrus fruits like grapefruit and orange. These are going to increase the inflammation in the body. Too much lemon wouldn't be good either. But lime is a little bit easier on the body. If you want to do a squeeze of lime in warm water, do that every morning. You'll do a wonderful liver flush. And the lime actually has a sweet post-digestive effect we call Vipak. And the lemon has a sour vipak. So sour feeds the fire, sweet cools the fire. So, so if you're gonna have a salad, squeeze some lime and a little bit of avocado oil over it, just a little bit. And that could be your salad for your, your September salad to remove the, um, the heat from the body. And aloe vera gel is another way to reduce the summer heat. That's a gel we, we choose over a juice because it's more, um, it's slower as it goes into the body. So there's a, there's, it's, how can I explain it? It doesn't just rush in and rush out. It has this slower effect where it goes in and it does the job. It takes the time because it's thicker. And that is internal. So you would drink a quarter cup three times a day if you have some serious inflammation of aloe vera gel organic over at Whole Foods or wherever you can get it. And um, you can get it on Amazon if you're not going out. And drink that for about a week or two and notice that your eyes are brighter, you feel a little bit like more of a pep in your step and the liver just gets lighter, you can digest better. Your belly might feel a little bit more balanced and calm and it can actually ignite the good fire in, in the belly after a while. Don't do it too long because then excessive amounts of aloe vera, drinking aloe vera gel can reduce your, your agony, your digestive fire. So just enough, maybe two, three weeks and, and then notice, stop and witness what's going on, reassess and just decide, should I continue on this anti-inflammatory journey or am I balanced? And then when spring comes, we wanna get rid of all of the sticky toxins that have accumulated from the winter because that's what happens in the winter. We get sticky, the blood platelets get sticky and we, we just sort of become more lethargic. We're couch potatoes, we're not as active. There's not as much sunshine to disperse all the blood platelets. So we need more laughter, lighter food, no cheese, uh, eating like soups that are um, lighter soups and um, just less oil and less glutinous sticky foods are best choices in winter so that you don't have to work so hard when it comes to spring to do your cleanse. The springtime is a great time to, to drink dandelion tea as well or to, to consume arugula and the, the leafy vegetables, you know, maybe steam them lightly. 
And then the fall is the time where people can get dried out and we often get dried out from excess heat. So it is the time for ether and air. It's the Vata season. And we want to moisturize internally and externally. And what I like to do in the fall is, is do a lot of oil application to the skin. So a good one would be sesame oil or sunflower oil. Jojoba oil won't stain your sheets or your towels. It's expensive, but it's really nice and it's really a, a stabilized wax, but it acts like an oil. And when we apply oil to the skin before a shower or a tub, what it does is it, it sends a signal to the brain that all is well. It immediately stabilizes the mood, helps you feel grounded, and it becomes this protective shield around your body by strengthening the electromagnetic energy body when you apply oil to the physical body. And it also hydrates the skin. And if you have food grade oil applied to the skin, it actually nourishes the skin, goes in deep to the tissue. And you can, you can absorb the nutrients from the oil right through the skin because the skin is one of the organs of elimination and absorption. So this is really important in the fall. It's important to do all the time, really. Ayurveda recommends what we call self abhyanga, which is Sanskrit for oil massage or, or, or rubbing the skin with oil. And it's nice to get it done by somebody professional. I don't know if you can afford a massage every day, and I think Oprah Winfrey can. But <laughs> you know, but if you can do it to yourself, or if you have a lover, someone you love, you can do that to each other. And you want to apply before the shower because, or the tub. I love doing it in the tub. Actually, you can apply the oil right while you're laying in the tub. Just rub it on your arms and rub it through the skin, and you can kind of sit in the warm oil and. And, and in the water combined and your skin will rehydrate and there'll be nourishment there as well. And a sense of grounding, a sense of feeling anchored to the earth. Um, and it gives you strong bones and it gives you uh, ability to ward off negativity. It's one of the best things if you're gonna be in crowds of people and there's gonna be a lot of fluorescent lights and negativity, doing a, a deep oil abhyanga before you go is going to be your best defense against negative you know emotional daggers or whatever you're getting from the ethers from negative toxic people because there's a lot of those people out there who are just you know they're they're there and um how to avoid that how how to be in that and yet not be derailed and abhyanga is one of the greatest secrets for that so um everyone's a little different regarding what type of oil they should use and i'm not going to go into that because that's a big huge topic but what I recommend for people in a nutshell is choose an oil that resonates with you. The smell, if you, if you go to Whole Foods and you just wanna start smelling the massage oils, there's a list actually, and I think there, I might even have a list on this PowerPoint of what essential oils are good for you. But um, I go by intuition. Everybody basically kind of knows what oil is gonna be best for them. And you really can't go wrong. It's just, it's a very subtle effect. If, you know, if you choose a wrong oil, it's really not going to do much damage as long as you get some oil on the body. If, unless you're choosing some crazy mustard oil that's so heating, then you're going to break out. Just a benign, innocuous oil like sunflower, jojoba, grapeseed, um, sesame, avocado oil. These oils are very, very neutral. Okay, so moving on, do I have anything else here? No, I think oh. let's move on to the doshic face types. We have a uh, yeah. lot of interesting things that then we, we, we need to bring you back on, uh, and have group workshops, but these are intro. So let's talk about this. So if you don't know what your Ayurvedic constitution is, you don't know if you're vata, pitta, or kapha, you can kind of look at the face and, and get an idea. Now, it's just an idea. It's not a full-blown analysis because there's many other factors we have to consider. But these are one, this is one way to start accumulating information about yourself. And looking at the nose, for example, she has sort of a, a deviated septum. And when you're born with a deviated septum, or even just a little crooked nose to the side, angular, maybe with a, a like, uh, you know, if, if, if it has shape that's kind of bumpy or irregular, I'll call it, uh, that is a sign of vata. So we would just check vata. There's one in vata. So you probably have some vata in you. We have to have all of them actually to survive. But 
you probably have a little more vata than most because you have the deviated septum or the angular, irregular shaped nose. Now, if you look at her brown eyes, that those are not kapha eyes. Those are, you know, smaller, medium brown eyes are, are very much a um, combination of vata pitta leaning more toward vata. If the nose is long and pointy, it can be vata pitta. If it's not pointy and just long and irregular, it's just vata. If you have a pointy chin, pointy nose, a very angular jaw, sharp penetrating eyes, and your speech is very penetrating, you can be very, very pitta. A lot of fire. And especially if you have rosy cheeks. So yeah, notice that about yourself and see if, if uh, what, what color is your skin? Is it, is it rosy? Is it more white? Is it more olive? These are all going to be indications about the dosha that you were born with. What else? So red lips, is our, they're another sign of someone who's really fiery. They don't need lipstick. I have friends like this, just bright, naturally red lips. And um, it, it also um, can tell you, you know, a lot about. So the lips here, if you have lines here, you know, these lines we get, the smoker's lines. These are actually signs of a prolapsed uterus or a prolapsed bladder there that, that needs eventually to be lifted back up and there's surgery for that. But this runs in families, it's very genetic and you might check with your aunts and grandmothers, mother, have they had any surgeries where they had to lift the, the bladder. So right in here is all um, sort of the, the, vag the vagina and this little crevice here represents the vaginal canal. And um, let's see what else, anything, here that is broken out, you can know that there's some sort of vaginal infection even. So um, the mouth represents the vagina, which is why in the Eastern cultures, um, you know, in Islamic cultures, they always cover because it's very private, right? Now, if you have a little tiny button nose right here, um, that's kind of squishy and wiggly, this can be an indication of kapha. The little button noses are kapha types. And you can also, tell by pushing your nose like this, the texture of your own cervix. I know some doctors who are so skilled, they can tell when a woman is pregnant by just going like this because the cervix will tighten when they're pregnant and the nose will feel hard right here. You can also see if somebody has hemorrhoids, if you have a big line right down the middle of your nose and two bulbs on either side, this is somebody who has serious hemorrhoid issues. And there's a lot on the face that people don't want anyone to know about, right? <laughs> This is a little embarrassing to have all this information. You don't want to walk up to people and say, oh, I know this about you and I know that. You just make your own mental notes. If you're a practitioner and a counselor, you start to know because having a prolapsed uterus or bladder or having hemorrhoids are actually vata imbalances. That's when you'll know, well, I'm going to treat this client for vata and pacify the vata condition within her by doing principle of opposites, by hydrating by um, relubricating the body, by giving them grounding foods, by reassuring them because Vata becomes very anxious and paranoid, by giving them mantras and positive reinforcement, um, giving them the whole list of foods that are going to be root vegetables, um, stews and unctuous sort of saucy sautés with clarified butters and ghee, these are the foods that will pacify those people who have um, what I just described here, vata imbalances. But you know, if you have a really little short cup of nose, this is also possible, uh, not to send fear to anybody, these are all possibilities. So these are just preponderances or preponderances in the body for what could happen. So it doesn't mean it will happen if you're, if you're doing everything right and you're taking good care, you, you may not have these things unfold. But if you have a little short nose, it can be colon cancer. Little button nose, you're more likely, you're more prone to getting colon cancer. So you wanna make sure you check that. So what else can I tell you here? All right, uh, so let's talk about skin types. Yeah, so, so Vata skin can be flaky, dry, brown spots, tiny little pores, and they tend to wrinkle. 
And then we have, and these are, this is genetic, very, very genetic too. So it's not just because you're eating too much vata food, then this happens. If you have a genetic predisposition for wrinkly skin, dehydrated skin, small pores with, with um, you know, just flakiness and brown, brown coloring, then um, not just brown spots, but just kind of a, a brown tone or tinge, then um, that can be exacerbated if you're also eating and having a lifestyle that irritates vata. So to adding too much of ether and air elements, eating windy foods like crunchy potato chips and crunchy and um, um, you know, uh, foods that just are dry. And those things and the lifestyle that could be vata deranging could be an unstructured lifestyle where you're always moving, traveling your job, or it could be, you know, traveling, you could even be an airline person, you know, always in the air. And this causes vata imbalances, will just dehydrate the skin, cause vata skin, even if you were born to have kapha skin. So you, you want to make sure that your genetics and your lifestyle are, are lined up. You don't want a job in the ethers as an airline, what do you call them? Uh, not stewardess anymore, but there's a, a whatever they're called now um, that are in, in the airplane. That, that's the most vata provoking job that I know of, that these people struggle with their skin. They can't ever get their skin to be hydrated because every time they go up in the air, they're dehydrated, they come down and this constant fluctuation of up, down, up, down also causes dehydration. So keeping a routine, keeping everything structured, steady, 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 causes beautiful skin, believe it or not. So the Pitta skin is, is going to have a little rosy, you know, a, ro a red nose or ro their ears might be a little rosy or um, lips are going to be red. Even their eyes might have, you know, bloodshot, you, you know, even the, the lining of the eyes might be more pink than, than normal. And their tongue will be a little redder than other people's tongues. And um, they can tend toward rosacea and acne and anything red. And these people will have sensitive skin. They'll tend to have allergies to essential oils or, or smells, or they're just hypersensitive people. They need to be careful about what they're eating and, and, and um, making sure they're eliminating because skin is the organ of elimination. And absorption. So if people aren't eliminating their bowels every day properly, and Dr. Ladd had a great expression, satisfaction upon evacuation. A lot of us feel like, oh, well, I just went, but they didn't get that feeling of satisfaction. You know, when you, when you go to the bathroom and it's like a complete movement, you feel like, ah, oh, you know, even dogs, when they have a complete movement, they're all like, woohoo, start wagging their tail and they're all happy. And that's the way humans should be. We should have that feeling of satisfaction upon evacuation. If we just have pieces of bowel movements come out of us and it's not that completion feeling, then the toxins will be reabsorbed into the bloodstream and come out through the skin. So, and that can come out in red inflammatory stuff too, or in pustules through kapha skin where they're, you know, white heads that don't turn red, but they're just these big, you know, um, this names for them. I forgot the name, like milia, I think is one of them. And they're just clogged, clogging on the face. So the Pitta people will have more medium sized pores, but if we go into Kapha, they'll have big pores. They hardly wrinkle. They have more oily skin. They look young and they age, basically are age less. The skin is age less for Kapha people. They look young forever except when they're younger, it's hard because they have oily, oily skin and, and they may be prone to obesity even in swelling. But as they age, if they can keep the obesity and swelling in check, they can age into having beautiful skin all the way up until their 80s and 90s. And they will have, you know, more white skin, cold to touch. It won't be red. Okay, so what else? So Here I are think, yeah, these are massage oils, the classification. Maybe you can touch upon it a little bit, or you think which oil, uh, you know, we, we said that which oil to use is, uh, is a big topic, but just talk about it. Um, well, basically, if you choose a neutral oil, because it's, it's not worth going into if you don't really know what your dosha is and you don't, you're just kind of, you know, randomly yeah. guessing and then you have to kind of seek out an oil that is supposed to be right for your dosha. And 
So what I teach in, I teach many different demographics of people who are you know, highly trained or right down to those who knew nothing about it. And when I'm talking to people who know nothing about it, the best way, the most practical, helpful information is to teach about oils that are more neutral because then you can't go wrong. And so I listed those neutral oils, those, the jojoba, the sesame, the sunflower, you know, um, grape seed, apricot, oil also and avocado oil. They're very neutral and you can't go wrong. What you can do to make them more doshic specific is add essential oils to them <clears throat> to make it easy. You could add, if you're, if you're um, wanting to reduce inflammation, add essential oil of rose if you, or lavender, which is pretty tridoshic. If you want to increase some heat in the body and you, you, you have, you know, you're cold and maybe you have initiation going on, um, you feel ungrounded and you just tend toward being chilly, then you could add amber. The smell of amber is so nice. Uh, you could even add rosemary or Tulsi. Tulsi is a beautiful smell. It's a holy basil smell. And if you're, um, and that's also, those are very stimulating as well, like grapefruit and uh, those will stimulate the skin and even help flush out some fat adipose tissue and toxins. There's a whole cellulite oil recipe that um, I just designed and I'll be selling it on my website eventually where you apply it to the skin and it, it can actually help to melt the fat because the, the nature of the oils can really heat the, um, the, 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 the dermal fat right under this, the, um, the dermis of the skin. And if you have a Vata type of skin and you're wanting to rehydrate and um, warm up because Vata tends to be cold, then castor oil is one of the thicker oils and it is one of the most hydrating oils ever. Even black castor oil is, is just divine, it's luxurious. And lavender oil is, is basically your tridoshic oil. It goes with every dosha. If you, if you want lavender, it's very calming. And as, as well as amber is, is good for vata too. Um, I'm trying to think of another calming oil. It's just not coming to me right now, but I say go to the store and smell and then which one resonates with you. Choose that one, add it to your oil and apply that to your skin daily. Okay, so you, you talked about the oil, apply oil to your daily every day. This um, is the daily abhyanga I was talking about, how important it is. Yeah. It just makes you feel better. And if you can't do it to your whole body, do it to your ears and your feet and even, you know, hands and, and um, the, the wrists and to sleep. Oil at the top of your head is really helpful. Yes, here, here's a list. If you want to just quickly go through it, this was for my massage therapy students who really, I had to train them very specifically because they were gonna graduate and have to really choose the right oils for their, for their clients. So this was geared for massage therapists, not to general public. That's why I have um, it in a VPK, you can see. And it's, some of this is strange, the, the whys, like there's some distortion, I don't know what that is. I noticed there's some cues thrown in here too. I think in, trend, in, in the trend, translation as i must have sent this to you on email there some typos showed up so there should be pluses and minuses here instead the y's are here pluses okay. and minuses mean it balances or increases or decreases the dosha but um, probably not very helpful to see these y's i have no idea how the y's showed up okay okay no for, no no worries so it's, it's basically vata pita and kapha and by ignore the why whoever's watching it right now right? yeah just that. ignore this wise okay 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 so these are again list of different oils i think you talked about quite a few of them um and ignore the wise please and just right yeah, so, yes ignore the wise okay and again a more list of oils there's a lot of list of oils but each thing's going i have a whole list of oils and this is now the gratitude from you Yes, I have to say that Dr. Lad, the Sant Lad at the Ayurvedic Institute was my greatest teacher in Ayurvedic medicine. Even when I went into my master's program at the Maharishi University, Dr. Lad still 
he took the cake. <laughs> so he uh, is one of the leading experts in the country and one of the kindest, most intuitive, most humble, most brilliant men, um, teachers I've ever met in my life. So I was really lucky to study with him in the front row of his classroom. He's not teaching anymore. I think he's getting um, up there in age, but I mean, he's teaching, I think little workshops, but I don't think he's teaching the main program anymore where it's the whole year program. I think he spends a lot of time in Pune, India because he has a, a center there as well. So he's half in Pune, half in the United States. But when I was there in 1997, he was the main teacher, the one and only teacher. And I think it was one of the last years that he did that. So I was really lucky. These other teachers too, I have to thank Sonia Masako. She's incredible. If you want to Google her, her website is chock full of information about beauty and herbs. She's an herbologist that just will, um, like no other, basically. She's one of the teachers at my school, actually. And Dr. Nina is also a um, beauty expert, leading beauty expert. And she used a term called just Ayurveda beauty care. I believe that was, if you Google that, you might find her or her name. And Dr. Mishra also talks about transdermal marma therapy. So he's an expert on the marmas in the body, which are the doorways in the body. They're, they're junctions of vata, pitta, and kapha. They're like acupressure points. And he teaches about how to work with the marma points, how to keep them open so more prana, more love, more light, more energy can come into the body when you put essential oils or you, or you wake up the marma points by gently pressing or even doing energy over them or even using gemstone therapy over them or cupping or crystals or things like that. And Amita was Dr. Nina's um, cohort. They work together. She is also chock full of information. Pratima wrote a book called Absolute Beauty. I highly recommend that book. It's based on Ayurvedic medicine. And Gandharva was another really great teacher who was teaching more about the astrology of um, Ayurveda. And that, that led me down a whole nother um, path, which I'm immersed in now. A Vedic astrology is my latest passion, even more than just regular Ayurveda. I love Ayurveda, but Ayurvedic astrology is, is extremely powerful and telling because when we were born, all the planets were in a certain place and you can kind of know your constitution right from your birth chart. Well, I hope I answered all your questions. I hope you enjoyed that. Do you have any, is there a Q&A? I'm happy to answer questions. Yes, we have live audience actually. Oh, good. Um, okay. And and uh, there were questions coming up before I, I'll stop sharing. And you're welcome to uh, ask questions. Um, you can also reach us. I've written our email and, and website as well. Uh, so let me see the questions that are coming up. Okay. So somebody is asking: Is it compulsory to do abhyanga in Sweden after Shirodhara? Is it what? Is it mandatory? That's what somebody's asking. Do you have to oh, do a Ben Sweden after the Shirodhara or you can just only do the Shirodhara? In? Shirodhara, during a classic Panchakarma, Shirodhara is the last modality. So if you're okay. going to do a whole Panchakarma with all the modalities, do your Shirodhara at the end. Okay. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. we hope we answered this question. Any other questions from, from live audience? We have quite a few in Zoom and, and this is being streamed live on uh, Facebook as well. So any other questions you have, we can answer that right now. I, I think it was a beautiful talk. Um, we should, um, we, should uh, we can keep having you come back whenever you want. And there's, you are like a wealth of information, so much beautiful information that's coming out of your, you know, it, it, it helps so much what you said. So Thank I'm so you. thankful. Yeah, so thankful to you. Okay, so uh, all right. So um, uh, with that, we're going to wrap up this session, and we will let you know when we offer our group workshops uh, from Karen in the future. And uh, any final thoughts from you, Karen, before we before I wrap up? Well, if you want to learn Ayurveda, Ayurvedic medicine, how to be an Ayurvedic health counselor, I offer okay. a program at SacredStoneHealing.com. It's a seven month online program or a twelve okay. month. You have the option to do either one and it, it you can graduate from my school as an Ayurvedic health counselor and, and it's all online except for five days of internship and that's only if you join the 12 month program the seven month program there's it's purely online and we meet once a month for sangha which is gathering together on zoom but basically you go at your own pace start anytime you like 
and it's very affordable. And all of my videos are are recorded from the masters. We have a lot of Dr. Ladd, a lot of Sonia Masako, a lot of Simon, who is uh, Chokowski, who is, I have, um, I have the top dogs um, in my, in my school because um, I wanted to have the cream of the crop to offer my students. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. And we would love to have you come back for group workshops to the end user. Um, you know, we'll talk about that after, after our sessions. With that, I'd like to thank you so much. And thank you all the viewers for watching our sessions. We've had three sessions today back to back. So please uh, share our sessions and help us grow this community of natural and holistic therapies. With that, signing off, my name is Amita. Until tomorrow. Namaste. Namaste.